How's it going, everyone? So, as you know, you know, with season coming up and everything, uh, everybody's getting ready and stuff, and I've been getting ready as well. I've been hanging tree stands and stuff, and that's what this video is about. Uh, just trying to give you as many tips as I've been able to muster up throughout the years through people I've met, things I've read, videos I've watched, stuff like that. I'm trying to concentrate all that information to you and give it to you. So, it's a bit of a longer video, but there's a reason for that. Uh, but, you know, we've all been out practicing. I'm hoping you're practicing with your bow, because if not, uh, that's not good because you should be ready for bow season when it comes around. Uh, here, September 3rd, that's like 16 days away. That's insane. Yeah, so I'm happy. Uh, I'm, I'm getting really jacked up for season. I can't wait for it to come around. And uh, hopefully I can have a lot of success this year, but I'm hoping you can too. I want to thank you once again, you know, for all the support and everything you, you've given Camera Doors just by watching our videos and subscribing and all that stuff. Uh, it really does. It's really awesome to know that there are people, you know, watching the stuff we do and enjoying what we're teaching you. So, uh, really appreciate that and just want to thank you guys. So, without further ado, uh, let's go and I will show you what I know about hanging tree stands. What's up guys? So when you hear the words tree stand placement, you think either of one or two things, okay? The first being the physical position of the actual tree stand on the tree, and the second being, you know, where on your property you're going to place that tree stand, okay? So, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cover both those topics. I am drenched in sweat, I've got spiders all over me, I've probably got poison ivy now, but you know what? It's a great day to hang a stand, right? So I'm out here, I'm going to tell you what I use in the woods to help me with my success as far as tree stands go, both the placement on the tree and where I place them on my property, okay? And I have multiple tree stands. I like River's Edge. I'm partial to them. They've worked really good for me. Uh, but basically, here's the deal. I have four or five stands that I have on my property. I own around a 70-acre property, okay? So, you know, it's not a huge property or anything, I don't, I don't own thousands of acres of land, but I still have success on this property every single year because of the things I use to help me with my success. So I'm hoping you can use these also on your property, and, uh, you know, hopefully it'll help you with your success, and uh, good luck to you all. So I'm going to talk real fast about this because I've got to get up to church at like 11 o'clock and it's almost already 9. I haven't even got ready. I'm all sweaty. i got spiders all over me, so that's not good. But here we go. <laughs> I'm going to give you the, the main tip for my tree hunting, you know, my tree stand placement uh, success. And that is cover, okay? A lot of guys, you hear them, you know, i got to get 40 feet up on the tree. i got to get 30 feet up on the tree, whatever, really high on the tree. And that's not necessarily true. What you need to do is get to the place where you're going to have the most cover, okay? Because... That's the most important thing. You don't want that deer to see you, right? I, mean, I don't, personally. Uh, but, but so, that's the deal. Like, you can see this tree behind me. I mean, it looks great at first glance. You know, it's a straight up and down tree. It'd be really easy to put a tree stand on. Uh, but then you got to realize, I mean, you can see there's barely any cover on that thing. You, you would have to get about 40 feet up in the tree to actually have any cover to cover you up from, from those deer seeing you. But... You know, here's the thing about Kentucky and a lot of other areas, when you're hunting in the hardwoods, like right around here, it's a little bit of a hardwood uh, flat, although it's more of a hill. Uh, <laughs> but uh, when you get up 40 feet in the tree, there's a huge canopy up there. So trying to get shooting lanes, I mean, you have to have like a 20-foot pool saw to actually um, get some of those limbs out of the way so you get some shooting lanes up there. That's another thing I like to talk about. So I know a lot of guys who... Um, they will cut down almost all the cover to get a 180 degree swing with their bow, okay? And, you know, I think it is a terrible mistake. You, you don't need that many shooting lanes. Shooting lanes are great. They are crucial. If you don't have them, you can't shoot the deer, right? But, but it is crucial to have those. But I'm just saying, you know, leave yourself some cover. A lot of times people will cut down their, most, their best part of the cover to get a shooting lane. And that's not what I would ever do. You know, I, I get my shooting lanes. I, I like to have, you know, four or five shooting lanes in front of me. Uh, but I like to have a lot of cover in front of me as well. So, personally, I wouldn't choose this tree, okay? Because it wouldn't give me enough sh shooting lanes uh, and enough cover, and that's that's pretty much the the big issue with it. Because I mean, really, like I said, you'd have to get 40 feet up in that tree to get any cover, and I don't want to do that because, you know, you, the canopy up there is just insane. So, what are you looking for? That's a question, right? I found my tree already. So you you might think, you know, maybe maybe this tree right up there. 
you know, he's got some cover up there. It's, it's not too bad. But then you look to the right, and you see we've got this guy. Okay? And you see, I mean, he, he is a little bit of a thinner tree. But he has got a very ample supply of that cover that I'm looking for, okay? So, you know, that's that's a, a big thing for me. Like I said, cover is a main issue that a lot of guys have, and that's what, you know, that's the main thing I look for. I look for cover. You know, I, sometimes I'm only 15 feet off the ground. That's okay with me, okay? I'm, I'm not a huge fan of heights, but I'm not scared of them. Like, I can get up 30, 35 feet in a tree and not be scared at all. Uh, well, yeah, that's a little bit of an overstatement. Sometimes I'm a little bit scared. Sometimes when you got to transition from your ladder to your tree stand, it's pretty scary. That's why I have to stay harnessed in whole time. Wear harnesses, they're important. Uh, <laughs> but that's a tree I'm going to be using because it's got so much cover. And I know that I can get, you know, this is a big, I've got a big flat right here um, that I know the deer are traveling, you know, up and down this path right here. So I'll be able to get some real nice shots um, with my bow in that area. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the main trail. I'm setting up my tree stand over that, okay? And you, as you can see, there are trees, you know, well, you probably can't see, but I can see them. There are trees all around here, but they're right on the trail. I don't want that because that would be a straight downward shot. I don't really want that. Uh, I'm already going to be high enough up there as it is because this is on a hill, and the place where they're going to be walking is actually on a flatter part of the hill. Very important. Wear your safety harness. So as far as on your property, I mean, of course, the main thing is you want to read the sign. You know, we have a bunch of videos beforehand of us, you know, telling you how to do that. Uh, but, you know, major paths, that's what I look for in the early season because, you know, it's really nice, especially when there's, you know, all this, this green vegetation. You can actually see the trails really well and see which ones are being used the heaviest, you know, the most. And so I'll usually set up on those trails because there's a very good chance later on in the season that the does are going to be using that and of course during the rut if the does are using it then the bucks are going to be using it as well of course food sources do change so paths can change but as far as i know this early season i know that there are a bunch of oaks up here so that should be good for later season but early season i know that they're using this path because it's just mowed right here i mean they've been they've been treading all over it so i'm almost 100 percent positive that i'll see some deer when i'm hunting up here in this stand okay so as you can see i went ahead and installed my steps here to my left uh so Something you gotta take in consideration, and a lot of guys, if you mess this up, it's a real big pain just to try and set up your tree stand again. So here, I'm gonna tell you this right off the bat. You have to figure out, you know, which hand you shoot with, okay? And if this is for gun, it's a different story, okay? Because gun is a lot more versatile than the bow. Bow, I'm, I'm right-handed, which means I pull back with my right hand, okay? That means I swing left naturally, okay? I can move my body, of course, like that, and you can get right, you know, right-sided shots, but I swing left. So that means I want to position my tree stand on the right side of the tree, okay? So that means when the deer are over to my left, I can just swing over and take that great shot, okay? But if you're left-handed, so if you're I'm trying to think, yeah, if you're pulling back like this, you're going to want to position your stand on the right side of the tree because you will naturally swing to your right, okay? So just something you should take into consideration. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and set my, my uh, tree stand up on the right side of the tree because I swing left, and uh, my tree stand is set. So one thing I do as soon as I get up in the tree stand, of course, is the first thing I do is, is harness up. But the second thing I'll do, like when I set up my tree stand, is I'll actually take my range finder and range the areas I think the deer are going to be coming, all right? And the reason I do that is because this way, if I do somehow forget this because I was shooting or for whatever reason I forget this, I will know approximately what the yards are to the places I think the deer are going to be coming. So that's just uh, a little tip, you know, when you get up here, do some yards. If you have a decent rem memory, you should be able to remember that come season and uh you'll be good to go okay guys so two things you want to consider when you're actually you know setting up your stands is the sun and your scent okay the two s's all right so the scent of course is the major one people hear about that all the time the sun is something you know you don't hear about too much you can use the sun to your advantage but it can also hurt you all right if you are going in for a morning hunt all right you're going to want to be facing the west okay 
Reason is, if you're facing the east where the sun is rising, you're gonna get that sun in your eyes, and you know also it's gonna make it easier for deer coming from the east to see you. Okay, but if you're setting it towards the west during a morning hunt. You're gonna have the sun to your back, and any deer coming from the west are gonna have the sun in their eyes, okay? So that's better for you, all right? Also, of course, if you're hunting, you know, afternoon hunt, you're gonna wanna be facing the east because the sun will be behind your back, okay? It's, it's a it's pretty simple logic, you know? It'll get in their eyes, they won't be able to see you, but if you do it the wrong way, it'll get in your eyes, and you won't be able to see them. So that's pretty basically how that might make sense. So when it comes to scent, what do you need to know, okay? Okay, well, first off, Thermals, you know, a lot of people don't think about it, but thermals actually do play a big role as far as your scent goes, okay? In the morning, your scent rises, okay? Because those thermals, things are heating up, the sun's coming up, it's heating up, and your scent is going upward, okay? Which means if you're on the lower part of a hill and the big bucks, you know, up at the top, that's not a good situation. Uh, and, you know, it, it all depends on, on how, um, you know, persnickety you think your deer are. Or they, do they really react bad to scent or, or, or you know, can you get, actually get by with a little bit of scent? You know, it just depends. It's, it's up to your property, your deer. You have to figure that out for yourself. Uh, but, you know, around here in the early season, the deer are not that spooky, okay? Because they haven't been hunted for a long time. But when it comes later season, they, they get a whiff of a human, they're gone, man. They're, they're out of there. Uh, so that's not good. But, you know, also another thing you have to take into consideration is the wind. I mean, most people know how to, to do that, you know, but you always want to be downwind of the deer. If you're upwind, they're going to smell you, and that's not good. Uh, so, something to take into consideration. Uh, so, I am in what we like to call the bottomlands, okay? It's by the rivers, by the Licking River here in Kentucky. And, uh, basically, this is the deal. On windy days, bucks love coming into these little valleys, these little troughs, okay? Because there's not going to be as much wind up top. You know, deer in general, not necessarily even bucks. Those bucks, whatever. Uh, they will like to come into these lower areas, these low-lying areas, because of the wind on really windy days. Uh, you know, it'll be swirling up there. They don't like that. They want to be down where the wind is pretty much secured. Okay, and here in these valleys, it usually just tunnels right through. Sometimes it swirls, but you know, it's that's life. Uh, there's always there's always that weird situation in life where you know one thing is kind of awry, but <clears throat> for the most part, the wind will just tunnel right through these areas, and that's what the deer like. They like to know where the wind's going. Uh, but up top, you know. When you're up on these hills and stuff, it's really windy. They don't like being there. They're not sheltered. I mean, they're, they're, if it's rainy, they're going to get raw wet and stuff. Down here, they've got a nice canopy. I mean, this is that's why I chose this spot. I'll be hunting this windy days when the wind is right, okay? Uh, you know, I don't hunt stands unless the wind's right, okay? Now, sometimes when you get up there, you think everything's going great, and then all of a sudden, your wind is switching, and, and you're in a different direction. But uh, you just have to live with that sometimes. <clears throat> So I'm here in my tree stand and I've decided to put up a trail camera and some trophy rock. And this is just to get some pictures of what's going through. Now, I want you to know, I didn't have to use a trail camera to know there are deer coming through here, okay? So we'll see what the results are. I'm not sure, you know, how many deer are going to be coming through here, but I do know there are deer coming through here. Simply because of the trails, that's for one thing, and you can see a lot of browsing going on around here and, and tracks as well. So, you know, I don't always just have to use trail cameras to, to pattern these deer, but it's great getting pictures of them and actually kind of, you know, knowing what time of the day they're coming through there. And that's helpful to me when I'm hunting. So, um, but, you know, something, if you don't have trail cameras, you don't have to have them to have success. I didn't ever have trail cameras until two years ago, okay? Uh, so, something you should know is that, you know, um, in the early season, deer are going to be coming out early morning. And late at night okay and I have pictures to prove that you know it's it's something that you should take into consideration because when it you know they don't want to be out in the midday when it's really hot early season bow season um, and so they're gonna be coming out early morning and late at night okay so that means when it's getting near the end of the evening you're like oh maybe I should pack up I'm not seeing anything just hold out for a couple more minutes just give yourself half hour more half hour past what you think you could sit through okay uh, and I promise you, you you'll probably have more success by doing that of course the longer you're gonna stand the better your chances of success are gonna be uh, but definitely you know in mornings too, get out there early and you know be ready sit there be quiet and that's that's the goal um, for me at least and I think it should be the goal for you as well so uh, I'm gonna set up some trophy rock here I'm gonna get a show camera up and uh, we're gonna see what we can see yeah, so that's basically the tips for tree stands. I hope you enjoyed. Please subscribe. That'd be great. And uh, join us for the next episode of Camera Craft Doors coming out in two.